Hey Vsauce, Michael here. When something becomes part of the past, can it ever truly be experienced again? Obviously, my beard will grow back. But it won't be the same beard, and it won't be on the same person. It will be on a slightly older, different Michael. But of course, the bearded Michael of the past isn't completely gone. No, he still exists in our minds as a memory and in the form of records of the past, like images and video. Hi, I'm the slightly older, different Michael you heard about. I am 130 days older than that guy. <laughs> wow, 130 days. You know, it really doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Just as an optical illusion is a distortion of our sense of sight, a temporal illusion is a distortion of our sense of time. Some seem small, like how a minute spent waiting in line can seem to take forever, but an entire day with friends can just fly by. Some seem deeper, like the uncanny feeling we get from recordings that make people from long ago seem more real than usual or the strange way time seems to sneak by. For example, the songs I liked as a kid, Wannabe, Mbop, Semi-Charmed Life, are as old to kids born today as the literal oldies were when I was born. <laughs> how could that be true? Am I really that old now? I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. I know how time works, but yet, I don't. Far from being just mistakes, these illusions are the edges of another dimension of space-time. Not one given to us by physics, not one given at all, but one made by our minds. Let's begin with the different ways there are to feel time. Actually sitting down and consciously tuning into the passage of time as it happens is called feeling time prospectively. You can't do that to time that's already happened, except you can. If I were to ask you, without looking, to guess how long you have been watching this video, you'd probably be able to come up with a guess you were reasonably confident in. Well, you arrived at that guess by feeling time retrospectively, by measuring it as it appears in your memory. Now, with that in mind, we are ready to approach our first illusion, the holiday paradox. A four-hour delay at the airport before your holiday can feel unbearably long while it's happening. But once you arrive, an exciting day at your destination can seem to fly by. Those feelings are all prospective timing. A week later, retrospectively, the delay often feels like a blip in your mind, and the day of sightseeing feels like a much longer, bigger part of your life. These are the long-short and short-long patterns of felt time. Which one you feel depends on whether what you are doing is empty or full. An empty activity is monotonous, unstimulating, unimportant to you, whereas a full activity is packed with sensations, novelty, significance, context change, and challenge. Now, I experienced this during my three days in isolation. While I was there, time dragged very, very slowly. A fear I have right now is that it's just Friday and that there's still a lot of time left. But now, years later, it's hard to believe that I spent three full days in that room? Jeez, it seems like something I barely did. Well, it's believed that prospective time feels fast when an activity is full because you're not busy thinking about time. If you're not attending to it, you're busy with something else, well, you won't notice how much time has passed. But to understand retrospective illusions, let's ask a different question. Does time speed up as we get older? Many of you may feel the same way. Looking back, my childhood feels like it lasted so long, but my 20s went by faster, and my 30s are going by even faster than that. A popular explanation is the proportion theory. It suggests that time seems to speed up as we age because each new unit of time that we live is smaller relative to all the time that came before. The year you lived as a nine-year-old was 10% of your entire existence up to that point. But when you're 30, another year is just 3% more life. Studies have found little evidence that weeks, 
months, or even years are retrospectively remembered as passing faster by those who are older. But decades? Yes. And while it's true that the older we get, the faster we tend to think the last 10 years went by, that only appears to be the case until about the age of 50. After that, the speed of decades appears to plateau. A leading explanation is that how long a duration feels depends on how many things in it can be recalled. In my normal life, lots of different things happen every three days. But during the three days I was in isolation, so little happened that I have few distinct memories from it. My mind sees that emptiness and perceives that it was brief. So, perhaps a decline in new experiences and rapid novelty as we age means fewer events our brains decide to commit to memory. So then, looking back, because there are fewer distinct memories from more recent decades, we assume they were shorter. You know, reflecting on all of this, it's striking just how many moments are forgettable. John Koenig, the author of the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, calls the awareness of how few days are memorable, Olika. Over time, our specific daily perceptions of what happened conglomerate into generalized ideas about how things were. Themes, moods, the big picture. What was perceptual becomes conceptual. And concepts are good. They lower cognitive load by wringing out details, leaving us with the broader, lighter gist. But they can also obscure reality, which brings us to our second distortion, chronological illusions. The world of our experience is not made of distinct entities. It's a continuity of fuzzy, overlapping blobs, and we impose concepts on it. For example, is a hot dog a sandwich? Is cereal soup? How many holes does a straw have? Those aren't questions about reality, they're questions about words we made up. Periodization is the chopping up of time into contrived pieces like the Stone Age, the Renaissance, the 80s, the 90s. But here's the thing, when did the 80s or 90s really happen? I mean, mathematically, they refer to years that have eights or nines in the tens place, but conceptually? <laughs> well, it's not like on January 1st, 1980, people woke up and were like, whoa, 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 <laughs> guys, it's the 80s. Quick, everyone, change your clothes. Concepts say too much and too little. Facts that expose their imperfections are perennial favorites on social media. I made an entire video about them, in fact. But what hasn't been discussed yet is the mechanisms by which we allow them to do their dirty work. Let's dig in and see what we can find. If I asked you to lay down on the floor of a windowless, clockless room and get up after you thought a minute had passed, you'd probably do a pretty good job. But if I asked you to get up after you thought 10 years had passed, <laughs> that'd be hard. We lack an ability to sense and grasp long periods of time. Also, we can't remember everything that happens. So instead of comprehending history's correct scale and structure, I believe that our minds often just use how we think about past events to place them relative to each other in time. One way we do this is through what I call the conceptual comparison heuristic, a technique whereby we use the similarity of elements in our conceptions of things to judge their temporal distance. If our concepts of two things suggest wildly different times, it's natural to assume that a lot of things happened between them. And if a lot happened, the duration separating them must be large. Alternatively, if our concepts aren't too different, the time between them must be bare of events and so it feels brief. It's not a bad strategy, but Tyrannosaurs died out 66 million years ago, and when T-Rexes began roaming the Earth, Stegosaurs had already been extinct for more than 80 million years. To a T-Rex, the Stegosaurus was even more ancient than we think T-Rexes are. Here's another example. When we think of Marilyn Monroe, we think of a young woman. Old Hollywood, mid-century glamour, Americana, black and white. When we think of the Queen of England, we think of an old woman in color in England and news headlines. Because those conceptions are quite different, we mentally place each woman in a different time. So it can come as a surprise to learn that they were both born in the same year. 
Similarly, it can be surprising to learn that Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. were also born in the same year. And if they were alive today, they would both be younger than the Queen of England. When Harriet Tubman was born, Thomas Jefferson was alive. And when she died, Ronald Reagan was alive. This is surprising to many of us because our concepts of these people are anchored to them as adults. But Harriet Tubman was a four-year-old when Thomas Jefferson died, and when she died, Ronald Reagan was a two-year-old. Far from just being amusing, chronological illusions can often have teeth. America can feel like an idea fixed long before any of us by the overwhelming bulk of events that came before. But Barbara Walters has been alive for more than a third of America's entire history. And if you were 25, you have already lived through and been a part of more than 10% of America's history. Chronological illusions may also be caused by what I call the construal level heuristic, a technique whereby we place things in time based on whether we construe them concretely or abstractly. In social psychology, construal level theory describes how abstract and concrete thinking relate to psychological distance. That is, how distant something seems as opposed to how distant it actually is. Now, unsurprisingly, it's been found that people tend to think about things that are psychologically distant more abstractly. But studies have also found that if people are asked to think about an event abstractly, they'll consider it more distant than if asked to construe it concretely. This may explain why things can turn out to be longer ago or more recent than we thought. If an event recedes especially quickly from relevance or is suddenly replaced in our daily thoughts by other more urgent events unconnected to it, our minds may shift its construal to a higher level, making it feel further back in time than it really is. Conversely, if attending to the low-level details of an event continues to be important, our construal level heuristic will make it feel closer in time than it really is. Our third illusion of time comes from the fact that time is always moving forward. Because of that, the psychological distances we feel towards things should also always be changing. But not all of them do. The belief that your place in time is stable is what I call the chronostatic illusion. Tim Urban pointed out that it is now the case that Jurassic Park, Forrest Gump, The Lion King were all released closer to the moon landing than today. As a person who remembers The Lion King being brand new and remembers feeling at that time that the moon landing was old, this is all very weird. The Lion King seems so much more recent than the moon landing ever did to me. The conceptual comparison heuristic places them far apart. My concept of the 90s will probably always stray from my concept of the present a little less than it should because the 90s and now have something in common that the 90s and the 60s never did or will. Me. Also, my construal level of the Lion King may resist becoming abstract because the Lion King continues to evolve and happen. The mechanisms I use to place things in time have sunk hooks into the Lion King, creating a sort of chronostatic cling that fools me into believing it's more near. A chronostatic illusion is spectacularly broken when you realize that you have become as old as your parents were when you were born. It doesn't always seem quite right. They came first and as such should always be older, but suddenly you're aware of a way in which they aren't. Your age gap with people in the past is not static. Your parents keep getting older right along with you, but the people they were don't. This can lead to empathetic realizations. They weren't any wiser or more folded into the world then than you are now. Considering the temporal perspectives of other people leads us to a fourth distortion, the chronocentric illusion. 